Okay, so we are back with more soap. I believe this is episode 19. In the last episode, um, Bert thinks he's invisible. He's having some issues. Jessica is out of jail but trying to skip bail, which sucks. And I don't really remember what else is going on. I think that's the main plot lines. So I've got my friend, I've got my caffeinated beverage, and we are ready to jump into season, episode 19. Oops. These are the dates for Mary Campbell. These are the dates. And these are the candles. And this is so. Miss what started the fight. <laughs> So what you're saying to me, Mrs. Tate, is although you had a gun, you didn't shoot it. You had a knife, but you didn't use it. You had a brick, and you didn't throw it. Is that what you're asking me to believe, Mrs. Tate? Chester, is this my lawyer? <laughs> Why is he yelling at me? I thought he was supposed to be on our side. <laughs> Mrs. Tate, I'm pretending to be the prosecuting attorney, so you get used to it when you're in court. Well, are you going to yell at me like that when we go to court? Because if you are... I'm not going. <laughs> no, no the other one will. State, I promise something very nice. The prosecutor will probably yell. Well, uh, who is the prosecutor? I don't know yet. Oh, well, Chester, when you hire the prosecutor, make sure it's someone nice. <laughs> Mrs. You see, I was just telling Chester, I don't think we really need a lawyer or a case or any of this. See, I thought I would just go to the jury and tell them I'm innocent. They'll believe me. Yes. Chester, all my life, people have always believed me. See, I have that kind of face. My mother once said to me, Jessica, with a face like that, you could get away with murder. <laughs> Not the best choice of words. You see, I was just thinking, Mr. Uh, Mr. Magoo. Magoo. Right. You see, I Mrs. You Tate, know. why don't you go inside and join the rest of the family? <laughs> Tell me, Tate, is this the way she generally is, or has she had a couple of boilermakers? <laughs> no, that's pretty much Jessica. You see, I usually rely upon putting my client on the stand to testify in their own defense. But I mean, in this case, put her on the stand? You might as well strap her in, shave her head, and attach the electrodes right there. <laughs> oh, we've got to look for some character witnesses amongst the rest of the family. We've got to find something to say, my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone? Seeing Benson reminded me there was something else about the other episode I wanted to say. I love how Benson brings food. To everybody in distress <laughs> it's not just because he's the butler food is his love language food is how he tells people shows people that he cares about them and that he's thinking of them he brought Jody the meal in the hospital he brought Jessica the meal in the prison it's just such a beautiful display of love and affection from Benson and I forgot to mention it. <laughs> this is Eve Ronald Malou. He'll be handling Jessica's case. Thank you all for coming. Good afternoon, everyone. Please sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and he clearly feels comfortable. Benson. Uh, <laughs> now, you were very kind to come in Mrs. Tate's behalf. What we're looking for are good character witnesses. So please remember, if there is anything in your past that might discredit you, tell me. I don't want to call you as a witness, only to have the prosecution reveal something about you that's embarrassing. What is Bart doing? Now, Mrs. Campbell? Uh, Jessica is the dear... Does Bert currently think he's invisible, or is he just 
inspecting the, the attorney. The most wonderful, kind, good-hearted sister there ever was. And she didn't do it. Oh, that's very nice, Mrs. Campbell. But I think the jury might find your testimony a little partial. But thank you anyway. Uh, Mr. Campbell, where's Mr. Campbell? Is that? I am invisible. He doesn't know where I am. He doesn't know who you are. <laughs> he doesn't know who you are. There he is. Mr. Campbell. <laughs> your son. Do you think your sister-in-law could have killed him? Absolutely not. Good. Now, he could be a very important witness. You see the victim's father testifying on behalf of the accused. Now, what makes you so... <laughs> what makes you so certain that your sister-in-law couldn't have killed him? One, she has red hair. I beg your pardon? And two, I have never seen her do or say anything suspicious. Well, Mr. Campbell, I'm sure that the prosecutor would point out to you that she wouldn't do or say anything suspicious with you standing. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. She didn't know I was there. She couldn't see me. You see, it was while I was invisible. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Terrific. Invisible? Put him on the stand. We might as well throw a bag over her head and tell the squad to fire right there. <laughs> Danny? Yeah. I'll testify. No, wait. Wait, wait. He can't testify. Why not? Mom. I know Aunt Jessica didn't do it. With the kind of work that you do, how will that look to a jury? Ah, come on. It's not going to make any difference to them. That won't make any difference. The kind of people you work for? Well, for God's sakes, what does he do? Work for gangsters? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think your Uncle Chester has a point. Next, Jody. I don't think I ought to testify. Why? I'm gay. Oh. <laughs> well, these are more liberal times, Jody. I don't think that would matter. Last month, I tracked him in two. The quickness that he took his hand away. Son. A suicidal homosexual? <laughs> you certainly have your hands full. <laughs> Sorry, Jody. <laughs> Next, Chuck. Where's Chuck? <laughs> now, Chuck, you are the deceased brother. That's right, and I'm Bob. Is there any reason that you can't that testify? Uh, Bob Deal, baby. Bob, please, he's talking to me. Yes, well, he's making a big mistake. Will you yeah. just shut up? Don't tell me to shut up, you moron. You're not calling me a moron. Jerk, jerk. I tell you, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. That's what happens when you don't acknowledge Bob. He's talking to a dog. No, actually, he's arguing with the doll. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. I have for character witnesses Al Capone, Tinkerbell, <laughs> Punch and Judy, and the Invisible Man. <laughs> Is there something wrong? Oh, Jessica, the Campbells have been no help at all. No help? Well, you see, we don't usually have murder suspects among our relatives to help. You see, we haven't had much practice in helping killers. Got it? Listen, you lunatic! What? <laughs> That's all right. Let him go. Let him go. Don't go hold him. Can't see me now. Can't see him now. Please, please, hold it down. This is no help to Mrs. Tate. I mean, she's got all the evidence against her. It's important that the jury see a very close-knit family. Now, please, I beg of you. We don't have an awful lot going for us. Now, the Tate family. Is there anyone in the Tate family who cannot appear on the witness stand? Uh, have you, uh, met the Major? No, I <laughs> Major? Yeah? This is Mr. Malone, an attorney. Glad you're here, Edgerton. <laughs> it's about time we court martial some of these petty waste mama's boys who go over the hill. If we shoot a couple of them, it'll set an example for the other men. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> uh, 
That's uh, Jessica's father. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Eunice? Yes? Uh, is there anything that could damage your testimony? No. On a bit? <laughs> Nobody knows. Knows what? I know. What do you know? You're the only one who knows. I don't know. If I know, you never know who else knows. You know, you're right. I know. I can't testify. I know. <laughs> How about you? What about me? How long have you worked for Tate's? Forever. <laughs> Do you have any secrets? Of course I got secrets. Well, can you tell me? Well, if I told you, they wouldn't be secrets. <laughs> Could you appear on the stand? Yes. Terrific. Now, Mr. Tate. I love it. A man who leaps on anything with a heartbeat and he can testify? <laughs> That's enough, Bert. <laughs> of course, if he'd been invisible like me, no one would know. <laughs> ben, I don't know. I wonder if an invisible man can. <laughs> there it is. Something we have to test later on. <laughs> Mr. Malou. Uh, I can't testify. Why not? Uh, well, my ex-mistress may report some uh, illegal stock manipulations to the SEC. Actually, in a few days, I may be needing your help. I was wondering, do you have family rates? <laughs> oh, please, don't go. I need you for a witness. <laughs> Hold on to Benson. He's the only sane one in this building. Bert, you can't go. Mary, I gotta go. Bert, you promised to talk to the doctor. It's a bad idea. I'm in a lot of danger here. What are you talking about? It's Dr. Medlow. He's your friend. You know him? Mary, please. He's a psychiatrist, right? Right. Right. I said I would come down here. I thought all I would have to do is just show up and become invisible for him. But I'm, I'm getting nervous. And when I'm nervous, I perspire. And when I perspire, I get wet. And when I'm wet, I cannot make myself invisible. <laughs> now, suppose he wants a demonstration, and I can't give it to him. Being a psychiatrist, he's going to say, this guy's a loon. Let's lock him up. Uh -uh. I got a lot of work to do in my investigation. I can't take a chance. It's too risky. I'm sweating, and I'm leaving. <laughs> Bert, you're not invisible. You cannot make yourself invisible. You have never been invisible. You will never be invisible. Never, never. All right, Mary, that's it. I've had it. I am gone. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Campbell, how nice to see you again. <laughs> well, let's see, Mr. Campbell. The last time you were here, you were having some problems with impotency. A cure, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, wonderful. So then, uh, what brings you here? Oh, uh, well, uh, Mary has something that she wants to talk to you about. Oh, Mrs. Campbell? Well, Bert hasn't been himself lately. In what way isn't he himself, Mrs. Campbell? He thinks he's invisible. <laughs> he thinks he's invisible? Yes. Uh, darling, show the doctor how you make yourself invisible. <laughs> Could you do it, Edward? Have you made yourself invisible? Mrs. Campbell, how long have you considered your husband invisible? <laughs> I, I, I don't consider him invisible. He considers himself to be invisible. You He's going to get her locked up. Oh, just a teeny bit, perhaps. Bert, Bert! Bert. <laughs> Mrs. Campbell, now you and I have had a nice quiet time. Bert, <laughs> Mr. Campbell, are you all right? I don't understand that. Yesterday I could have walked right through it. I, you know, it's because I'm wet. <laughs> also, you may have a whole different magnetic zone down, down here. I don't, I'll check it out for you. Don't worry, I can use a doorknob. See you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He thinks he's invisible. That's what I've been telling you. I've never seen that before. Invisible. What can be done? Well, in the movie, Claude Rains covered himself with a bandage from head to foot and wore sunglasses. <laughs> Dr. Murphy, I'm sorry. Well, this is an acute reactive psychosis, which we do see. I suggest we consider putting him into the Neuropsychiatric Institute for observation. You mean put him away? 
Oh, but he's harmless. Well, at he's the not... moment, yes. I don't know. Well, I think don't think about think it, I... Mrs. Campbell. Now, I'll call you tomorrow, but do think about it. I mean, anyone who entertains the idea that he might be invisible really needs help. I know. That's why I came here. I'll call you tomorrow, Mrs. Campbell. Campbell, is that you? <laughs> the driver's therapist is insane. Corinne, I want to talk to you. Please, Corinne. Hi, this is nice. It's a uh, light. How many rooms do you have? Look, you didn't come here to sublet the apartment. Right. I, well, of course not. I came here to talk. That's something you had 23 years to do. That's true. But, Corinne, it just wasn't quite that simple. I, well, you see, Daddy and I decided that we would tell you about your adoption just as soon as you were old enough to understand. And, well... It would have been silly to tell you before then. I mean, easier, but silly. And, well, when you were old enough, Daddy and I thought about it, and, and we decided to wait. Because, Corinne, it was that exact month that you were having braces put on your teeth, and you were very upset about that. And you were also terribly upset because you were the first girl in your class to get a bra, and the boys were snapping the back of it. <laughs> You see, Corinne, Daddy and I just didn't want to upset you anymore that month. What about the next month? Well, you were still upset about your braces. And after that? Pimples. <laughs> and then? Your first period. And then? I was afraid. Oh, Corinne, I loved you the way I loved all my children. And I was afraid that if I told you who you were and where your real parents were, you'd leave and go to them. Which was not too unlikely at the time, Corinne, because you blamed Daddy and me for your braces and your bra and your pimples and your period. <laughs> <laughs> I lived through your drinking shoe polish. And eating a worm. <laughs> I made ballerina costumes and baked birthday cakes and I laughed with you when you dressed the dog in Eunice's clothes. <laughs> and I cried with you when Johnny Carrington left you in the seventh grade for that hussy Rita Lewis. <laughs> because you were my child. And you were no less my child than had you come from my womb. Corinne. Love does not come from having shared the same body. Love comes from having shared a lifetime. I'm on trial for my life now, and I know most people would say that's the most important thing in the world. But it's not. The most important thing in the world to me right now is that once I had a little girl and now she's gone. I'm going to go now and I just want you to think about what I said. Your room is still there. There's the who's here, the jailbirds. <laughs> You have no business to be in my house. Ma, yes, I dear. am Corin. <laughs> you kept my child away from me for 23 years. For 23 years I couldn't be with my baby. And I want you never to sit foot near her again. I want you to go now. 23 years? Well, you think about that. Because all I know is that if anyone had taken my baby away from me, I would have moved heaven and earth to find her. And it wouldn't have taken 23 years. Ha! Huh? I mean, when Ingrid decided to come back, she just did it. So what stopped her in the past? What stopped her, you know, 20 years ago 
what stopped her 10 years ago, what stopped her a year ago. She, Jessica was wrong, but also Ingrid seemed to not even try to come back for Corinne. I can just imagine what she told you. It must have been some beautiful story about how she loved you and how you were her child and how she loved you just as much as all her other children. <laughs> but don't you see, Corinne, she had a reason to come here and say all that. Her high-priced lawyer told her she mustn't let you testify against her. Everything. Thing she said, Corian, she said to save her own neck. She lied, Corian. What would Corinne have to say in court against her? She's gonna go to court and blame her for her periods? Who is it? A message, Walter. What is it? Where's your wife? Marilyn's at the hairdressers. You won't believe this. Just look at this. Oh, adorable, Walter. You call me over here in the pouring rain to look at your speech? It's the wrong envelope. Here. Look at these. Look at that. Oh, my God. They said they had pictures. They weren't bluffing. Oh, my God, Walter. If anyone ever saw these, I, I mean, I'm shocked and I'm in them. <laughs> They want fifty thousand dollars, Eunice. Walter, do I look like that? Eunice, come on. Well, do I? Do I look like that? Oh, from that angle, yeah. Oh God, I just look awful. I'm one hundred and ten years old. A man sitting in a tree doesn't take flattering pictures, Eunice. Well, we have a family photographer, Ben Evans, who's taking gorgeous pictures of me. Eunice, what? They want fifty thousand dollars. Who is it? Me. Oh my God, it's Marilyn. Hi. Uh, there. What? Who is it? Me. Uh, 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 I didn't order tea. I ordered coffee. Take it back. Coffee, you jerk. It's Marilyn. Now open the damn door. Uh, right away, dear. So I'll just have to put this in uh, uh, the briefcase. Uh, <laughs> Hi. What's the matter with you? I thought you were at the hairdresser. He couldn't take me. Exactly the way I feel about you sometimes. Listen, let's have uh, let's have lunch. Huh? It's morning, Walter. Well, let's have breakfast. I just had some. Well, I'll have breakfast and you can watch. Walter, I don't want to go out. Where are you going? Open the window. Get some air in here. No, no air. No. Uh, hey, hey. Uh, here, here. It's, it's awful. The city has the worst air in the world. And how about some light, Walter? No, no light. The light's worse than the air for my eye condition. What eye condition? Blue. <laughs> uh, blue eyes very sensitive to light. So sit in the closet. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, my God. What? It's raining. <laughs> it's raining. Oh, what? Oh, my God. What? Are you all right? I hate heights. <laughs> Nothing. Walter, you just said something. No, I was talking to the pigeons. I hate pigeons. They're filthy pigeons. <laughs> what? Your speech, sir. Oh, no. <laughs> what about my speech? I'm here to pick it up for the press. No. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> here. Hey, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Walter, what the hell's the matter with you? What are you talking about? You're acting so strange, so jumpy. I am not. What's this? Give me that. <laughs> oh, it's my speech. Oh, my God. That means, that means that, that, that he got... The pictures! What pictures? Publicity pictures. <laughs> Bad publicity.
committed, or will life continue to be a snap for him? Will Corinne go to Jessica or stay with Ingrid? What will Corinne do on Mother's Day? Will Malou defend Jessica without character witnesses? Or will he put Al Capone, Tinkerbell, and the Invisible Man on the stand? Will Eunice get off the ledge? Will Congressman McCallum get the pictures back? If he doesn't, will Eunice want to get off the ledge? These questions and many others will be answered on next week's episode of So. Okay. So that was episode 19. I cried again. They, they keep making me cry with some of this stuff. Jessica is going through it. Mary is going through it. The whole, everybody in this family is just, poor Bert. He's, he's nuts, but I hope they don't lock him up. <laughs> I hope he just winds up like grandpa, just kind of being crazy at home. <laughs>